Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, and a special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Happy Halloween! And as I say that, it reminds me to say that we will be marking All Saints Day next Sunday. Happy Reformation Day! That's today, October 31st. Our church and so many of our sister churches stand in the Reformation tradition, which ever calls us to recognize our immediate relationship to God and to each other. And happy first day of our new worship series, My God is a Rock. Our focus for today is Solid Rock. Among the many metaphors and images that the Bible and our broader Christian tradition have for God, rock is among the more well-known and enduring. What does it mean for you? Does it? And if so, how does it? Describe who and what God has been in your life. Our psalm reading for today will have a lot to say about that. It's also our stewardship season here at Hillcrest. We will hear first from our co-moderator of council, Katie Colbath, and then prepare ourselves for worship. Let us enter into worship. Let us ever move forward with each other and with God, who is our rock. Good morning. I believe in Hillcrest. When I think of Hillcrest Congregational Church and United Church of Christ, there is a mouthful. When I think of Hillcrest, It's faces of people, the good people of Hillcrest, who come to mind. Because even if there is a long, impressive name for our church, we are still a group of people who have come together to publicly declare their faith in the goodness and grace of God, our rock, whom, as Psalm 18 says, we honor for keeping us safe. Praise be to God. Last week, Allison preached to us to trust our faith, a powerful message, and today we are again called to trust our faith by committing resources to Hillcrest in our pledge drive. Yes, we are committed to Hillcrest and the values that are manifested here, a primary value being the practice of serving God and each other. There are a lot of servants here at Hillcrest, a lot of servants, faithfully reaching out and supporting the community with food, clothing, and shelter through the food pantry, clothing room, and winter night cooking. There are servants faithfully leading us to act and support for social justice. There are servants faithfully supporting church members struggling with health issues. There are servants faithfully leading us in dynamic worship experiences, leading us on council and trustees and committees and ministries. Hillcrest is a church that serves God, a church of servants. In conclusion, let's look at the pledge drive, the stewardship drive this year and past years as an opportunity to serve God with financial resources that will continue grow, and flourish this church of faithful servants. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who is our rock, O God, who makes us strong, O God of love and of life, let your Holy Spirit be on this service and on all that we do and say and pray and meditate on together. Guide us and move us with your Holy Spirit. And let all of God's children worshiping now say together, Amen. Amen. God reigns o'er all the earth, green hills and valleys low. The farms and towns in golds and browns, God's grace and beauty show. God reigns o'er all the earth, stone banks and spreading plains. In rainbow hues, reds, yellows, blues, of streams and country lanes. God reigns o'er human life through youth and aging years. In death, in birth, in grief and mirth, in all our hopes and fears. God reigns o'er human life, our inspiration still. Through all our schemes, in all our dreams, we see God reigning Our reading for today is taken from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord God, and you make me strong. You are my mighty rock, my fortress, my protector, the rock where I am safe. You alone are God. Only you are a mighty rock. You give me strength and guide me right. You are the living Lord. I will praise you. You are a mighty rock. I will honor you for keeping me safe. Rock of ages, let our song praise your saving power. You are mid the raging foe, where our shelter tower. Pure is it as sailed us, but your arm availed us, and your Broke its sword when our own strength failed us. Children of the Holy God, whether free or fettered, wake the echoes of that song where you may be scattered. Yours the message cheering, that the time is nearing, which will see all set free, tyrants no more fearing. 
Rocks can be a funny thing. And people's relationship to rocks can be a funny and complicated thing. Some of us will remember pet rocks. Some of us have tried hard to forget. Of course, people wear rocks as jewelry and other ornamentation and have been doing that for about as long as there have been people, I imagine. Many scientists, as well as marketers of rock and jewelry and health products, will tell you about the energy that rocks have and transmit. Or on a grander scale, that rocks can store for us. All of that, and we haven't even touched on the main point of this psalm. But only the main point. There are others. The main point of this psalm and of so many references to God in the psalms and in our hymn tradition and in prayers and in poetry, God as a mighty rock, a fortress, our protector. I like this particular photo because it shows different rock formations and possibilities for understanding God as a rock all in one. This notion of God as rock is an image and a metaphor for God that runs through our Bible and broader tradition. It produced what is perhaps the most famous hymn of our Protestant tradition, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Many churches around the nation and world are singing it today. We sang it a few weeks ago. Martin Luther was, of course, drawing on our Bible reading from Psalm 18, as well as on Psalm 46 and doubtless other places within the Bible. God is our protector. God is our strength. God is the ground of our being, as one of the most famous theologians of the 20th century, Paul Tillich, put it. God protects, God defines, God holds. God is our very identity and essence, our core. Sure sounds a lot like a rock, even bedrock. Sure sounds like a great protective platform or overhang or even a cave or a fortress. Rock. Sounds like we have a neat and clean, strong and sturdy metaphor, right? Well, yeah, but let's look at how this psalm plays out and plays with and challenges us and comforts us and builds our imagination with and describes and strengthens and nuances our relationship with God and each other with this extraordinary image of rock. I love you, Lord God. And you make me strong. You are my mighty rock. Now just stop right there. I'm surprised that back in its heyday, the pet rock people didn't pick right up on this line, expressing love to and for a rock. Could sell a lot of merchandise with that line if you're a purveyor of pet rocks. I'm being silly, of course. Here in our psalm, Just following the line we've read, rock is expanded to include my fortress, my protector, the rock where I am safe. The words are simple and beautiful and so meaningful in their simplicity. Who of us can't relate? I hope and pray we all have experiences of persons or places that make us feel safe, secure held, supported, where we know without any strings attached that we are in fact safe. Do we need a place to hide? Sometimes. Do we need a place to nurse our wounds, inside or out? Sometimes. Do we need a place to gain our strength? Sometimes. You bet. There is God. And so the psalm goes on and says, You alone are God. Only you are a mighty rock. Fair enough. 
Do you experience God that way? At least sometimes? I hope and pray you do. And, or should I say but, the psalm goes on from the protection and the safety to, well, here's what it says. You give me strength and, we'll get to that and in a minute, first that you gave me strength. Again, some scientists and a whole lot of marketers will tell you about the energy and strength that rocks, and some rocks in particular, transmit. Who knows but that the psalm has that in mind? Certainly possible. What I can tell you for sure is that the word for strength used here The particular Hebrew biblical word for strength suggests capability, means, resources, worthiness, sufficiency, that sort of strength. Hmm. I guess we are pretty well equipped by God our Maker. I guess, to quote another psalm, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and equipped. I guess, to quote Larry the Cable Guy, we really can get her done. I guess, to quote any number of Marines or athletes or best friends in any number of movies, let's do this, is what God is all about. And that's where the rock metaphor starts to break down, or better, to break out. No metaphor can hold God, of course. And with God in, with, and all around us, and at our backs, and calling us forward, no limitations. Most of all, the limitations of our own minds. No limitations can or should hold us back. God is no stable, stationary, inanimate object. No, God is living, living for us, living through us, for life. The psalmist knows that. And the psalmist has been leading us to it all along. Remember that and? Remember when the psalm says to God, you give me strength and? Let's get back to that and. You give me strength, O God, and you guide me right. You give me strength and you guide me right. You are the living Lord. I will praise you. Again, God is no stable, stationary, inanimate object. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Some of us, most of us, have experience of simply and profoundly needing a safe place, a rock, a shelter, a fortress, to hide out or to recover, to gain strength. God is that place, yes. And, but, We need and we want, and God wants us to be out there, to be living life and life abundant. And so, as the psalm says so profoundly, God gives us strength and guides us. God is a living God, the living God. That's our rock. That's God as rock. Strong, sturdy, ground of being and fortress, bedrock, yes, and, and, giving us strength and going with us to support us, even push us when needed from behind and leading us and guiding us all along the way. That's one heck of a rock. That's our living rock. That's our living and loving God, and let all of God's people say together, Amen. Amen. Blessed and loving God, God who is our solid foundation, ever-constant presence in our ever-changing world, hear the prayers now that we lift up. Bless us and remind us that you are ever-faithful and ever-strong. 
in this season, as we celebrate Halloween and All Saints Day, we remember those who have passed on, the beloved dead, and we remember your promise of eternal life, that nothing and nobody is truly gone. Make us a space to celebrate, to grieve, and to remember those who made an impact on our lives. And we pray, as always, for travelers, for prisoners, for those who do not have a strong foundation of community, for frontline medical workers and rescue personnel and those who put their lives on the line to aid others, for the sick, for those in despair, for those for whom hope seems far away, for leaders, presidents, governors, and bishops. For all these, be that strong foundation that they need to have the strength to get through hard times or to make the right choices. And hear us now as we lift up those members of our Hillcrest community in need of a special prayer. For Anne, Kathleen, Kathy, Larry, James, Jim, Ron, and Vicki, and for the families of Betty and Suzanne. We lift up all of these prayers and petitions, and any now that we speak, either silently or out loud. And now let us say together those words that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. get our strength from knowing we are loved by the divine, no matter how we're feeling about ourselves at any given time. Your commitment to Hillcrest through your pledges and offerings strengthens our church as it continues its important work. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Divine Presence, thank you for your love and the strength it provides when we are feeling lost. We bring these gifts to you for your blessing. Please bless both the gifts and the givers that they and we and the programs and services they support may be used to do your will, to answer prayers, and to improve lives on earth. Amen. Guide me, O my great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren Hold me with your powerful hand, bread of heaven. 
And now let us receive the blessing. May the God who calls us to life and life abundant, the God who is our rock, who gives us strength and who travels with and guides us along the way. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and bring you and the whole world peace. Amen. And now I invite you to share the peace of Christ, one with another. Hold your hands to your heart or stretch out one or both to others. And say with me, the peace of Christ be with you. And now respond, and also with you. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping with us on Sunday morning, October 31st, 2021, know that you are most welcome at our special in-person worship and fellowship time beginning at 10 a.m. on the Hillcrest campus. Today is our fall fiesta, and there will be lots of fun activities going on, including kids of all ages, adults included, I'm told anyway, wearing costumes. And if you'd like to join our Zoom fellowship gathering at 11 a.m., I invite you to do that. If you've not yet received the Zoom link, email me now at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. Finally, I invite you to experience, engage, and participate in all that Hillcrest has to offer. If you're not receiving the weekly e-blast with our written news of community, please email me at the address just given, and we'll get you on the contact list. We move forward. We grow. We draw nearer to God and God's ways together. Hope to hear from you soon. Blessings. Amen.